Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part 26 of the front dash build. In this video we're going to look at the airspeed indicator and we're going to have a close look at its design and construction and some of its key considerations. Let's buckle up. What's quite straightforward about the airspeed indicator is, for all intents and purposes, it is made up of just three parts. These are, first of all, a needle for current airspeed, a further needle for maximum airspeed, and then finally a decimals rotary, which I'll refer to as a tape wheel. And it's this last part that my first thoughts were on in terms of the design and test phase of how would I get that to work and there's also the consideration of um, zero detection and the type of stepper that we'd want to use for this. So the first thing I do is I take a CAD CAM design printed onto paper and then stick it to some cardboard just so I've got like a mock fascia and I'll start printing the scaled tape wheel and a design in 3D print we can see here of that tape wheel which we'll stick it onto and it's just good to have that as that starting point for my tests and then throughout those tests I can look to just put things together make them work and then correct deficiencies the stepper that we can see underneath this tape wheel is an x27 type and for this one, I've modified it to remove the end stops so it's become 360 degree. Uh, my first thought with this type of stepper was that it would be ideal to use because it's got quite a thin profile. And it could fit quite comfortably in the space above that tape wheel. And that would be where it wouldn't interfere with the overall footprint of this panel. Where I move to further tests and the zero detection's working fine and I've got it set up and running, it becomes quite clear at the time and there was a few initial concerns, but it really does confirm that this one will just, this type of stepper is just not going to be fast enough. What we need to do is run this off something like an EMA 8, something that we know from the altimeter and the standby attitude indicator runs really well and it can run at speed. So as well as taking my initial tape wheel design and thinking through how I could alter that and perhaps even print it as well in a different uh, colour of PLA so some of the back lighting could be cast through it and illuminate the text, I start to think about how they, the neem rate would be incorporated and we can see here the design I arrived at. There's a few things to mention about this design. The first is that the tape wheel now uh, has a bearing embedded in it and that is held in place to an upper support bracket uh, via a bolt. The bottom of the tape wheel has a gear mechanism and that is mated up to a, a further gear we can see on the right which is attached to the shaft of the NEMA 8 and also on top of that is a trigger arm which will pass through the optical sensor for zero detection. And at this point I want to put this early design through its paces mechanically to see how it performs at greater speed run for a more prolonged period. So we can crank it up a notch now and what becomes clear is other than correcting a slight wobble in the tape wheel as it rotates in all other respects separate to perhaps a bit of a clunky feel it does run well reliably and it's very accurate. And of course the question at this point is, why is a tape wheel not mounted directly onto the shaft of the NEMA 8? Why is there this two gear system which has been put in place and pushes the NEMA 8 further back? So the reason for this uh, was all to do with the stepper that we would use here to drive the pointers. And in making that decision of which one to use, there were a few thoughts on this. Um, the first was that the range goes from 50 knots to 550 knots, but in reality, the pointer as you'd see it move in the sim would typically be from this point here at the 50 
round to here and it didn't use a full complete range so therefore the limited range x27 type would be suitable for this even though that itself has a limitation on how far it can go it should be sufficient just about to cover that range of movement also very few stepper motors tend to be dual concentric and in this case i wanted to drive both the current airspeed and maximum airspeed pointers so if i was to use something like um, a single shaft stepper or something like a NEMA 8 it it would be difficult for it to replicate the second pointer for the maximum airspeed and although that could just be um, that one doesn't have a vast amount of movement in the sim it could always be a placeholder I'd rather have both in operation so a dual concentric x27 star stepper was the one that I decided that I would look to use here the name for this one is a vid28 which we can see on screen now and it was this one that I used on the fuel quantity panel. The problem with this kind of stepper is the footprint of it exceeds beyond the footprint of this particular panel as we can see on this CAD CAM drawing. I looked at a whole number of orientations in mounting this and none of them work and if you move it in certain positions it will then also interfere with the tape wheel. So instead I looked at a different kind of stepper, not one I've used to this point, it's an X40. And this is based and similar to the X27 series but it's dual concentric just like the VID28. And the profile of this is somewhat different. The height and width is identical to a normal X27. It's just the depth that's greater. And it's for that reason that when I use this, as it's one that would fit within the footprint, that's what required the neem rate to be pushed back and hence the two gear system. So we can see on screen here the VID28, which is a good one as a test station and I've run a whole heap of tests um, as a build up for this panel. But then in the background, and we'll just move this out of the way and have a closer look, we can see the X40, which is the one that we're going to use. I've not used an X40 to this point in the Simpit, but it is pretty neat, and it's a good alternative to the VID28. And I think between the two of them, it kind of means any panel that needs a dual concentric uh, pointer needle it doesn't require any great speed between the two of them it's all covered so I'll go ahead and I'll mount that in place now on this particular stepper the coil solder points are at the front which is not necessarily an issue but I think in other panels it is ideal when they're at the back from a, a wiring perspective I now move on and I start to take some th designer 3d prints I've done of the various pointer needles this one's going to be for the maximum speed indicator and I'm just preparing to, to paint them this particular one I put some masking tape across it diagonally just so after I've painted it as we can see here I painted the two of them I can peel that off and we get the effect we see now a straightforward solution to get something in keeping with the sim The maximum airspeed pointer has a hollow shaft as I've designed it and that will therefore slide on to the outer shaft of this stepper and then the current airspeed one has a small hollow brass tube which will just slide through the other and onto the normal inner shaft of the stepper. So all is good and we can go ahead now and mount those pointers in place. And I think the result we have here is to good effect. We'll just have a close up look at that. So we can now mount the tape wheel in place and we can start to look now at the progress we've made from the initial test fascia with a cardboard background. If we put that to one side now we can see more of the final version we're building up and working towards. Whilst we now have all of the key components in place, we need to be turning our attention to all of the various PCBs and driver boards that will run this. So we can see those out before us now. And it's just a question of building an extension at 
the back of this which will hold all those in place. I play around with the design of various brackets, some of which 3D printed and others just using clear acrylic until I arrive at something that's suitable to hold it all in place. And I also spend a bit of time looking at the backlighting which so it can wrap around the various stepper motors inside of this. It's in two parts you can see here which will just connect together. And in fact, if we now just have a look at a test of that backlighting. And this really shows another benefit of using the X40 stepper because the footprint of that was such that it didn't extend and cover as much of the text or marker lines. So they're all illuminated nicely. I'm also pleased with how that's illuminated the tape wheel. So during night flying, it will be clear to see what the various readings are. And we've now arrived at the completed and fully built panel and we will take a moment now to just have a, a close look at that from all sides. So there's two distinct parts to this. There's a fascia which extends into the various stepper motors and then the next part beyond that which is all of the various PCBs that drive it. So in the next video in this series, we'll look to run a number of tests on this, install it into the front dash and bring it online. Thanks for watching.